Th thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Paul Derry and I'm Housing, Enabling and Delivery Team Leader at Dorset Council. And my responsibility is to increase the amount of affordable housing being delivered in the council area. When we do this, so we work to, with, to plan and deliver new affordable housing schemes um, and mainly working with registered providers to develop these homes. And when I say registered provider, I mean organisations also known as housing associations. Um, so companies like Asta, Magna, Sovereign, Abri, organisations I suspect you'll be familiar with, who, who build the bulk of the new home, new affordable homes in our area. We also do a lot of work with community land trusts. Um, we've completed a, a number of CLT schemes and we're working with about 20 at the moment. And these are a mix of urban and rural CLTs. So community-led housing did slow down a bit under COVID, but it's picking up again and really working with communities who want to have a sort of positive impact on their area. And also over recent years, Dorset Council's become a registered provider. So what we've been doing now is using funding from Homes England and some other sources to acquire accommodation for homeless people normally in need of support so we can get them out of their cycle of homelessness and really filling in this sort of gap that the main RPs don't work with. So quite a lot been going on over recent years at the council. We've also been working on a housing strategy. So this has just been announced and we'll do a bit more consultation on this. And you can see our main four themes of housing, meeting housing need, increasing housing supply, improving housing standards, and working on the prevention of homelessness. And what we're doing now is working on our action plan under the banner of Home In on Housing. And one of these is about improving the amount of, of affordable housing built, increasing supply, exploring Dorset Council's role in this and just say generally supporting new affordable developments and we'll be doing some more work on this and no doubt some more consultation and wanting to work with key partners on this no doubt some of whom are on this call and been watching these videos so hopefully you'll hear more about that in the near future. So I just want to start by giving a, sort of a bit of background from the council's perspective on why it's important to provide more affordable housing. So this is a snapshot of the housing register. So these are people that have joined Dorset Council Housing Register who are in need of affordable housing. And you'll see there's just under 6,000 households. I know it's actually just tipped over into just above 6,000 households on the housing register. And these are sort of um, approved applications, but also we're getting about 500 new applications a month. So th these are really high numbers and I think indicative of the high levels of housing need in our area. We've also seen a steady increase of homeless approaches. So the chart on the left here is our annual homeless approaches and you will see a, a steady increase. And on the right hand side is the number of homeless preventions that have been triggered. What we have been doing is an awful lot of work on getting involved in cases early to see if we can prevent homelessness. And what we're finding is where we get involved early on, we've prevented about 65 percent of homeless um, applications. That's really positive And that's work that we're, say, it, it, trying to increase. Also managed to see a reduction in temporary accommodation that we're using and bed and breakfast placements are gradually reducing. The continue to reduce bed and breakfast placements will be one of the focuses of the council over the next, next year or so, because we're aware that it's really not suitable accommodation for people that are placed in, they're only really suitable for really short term um, periods of time and also really expensive for the council. So again, we can use, our, our funding can be much better used elsewhere rather than say on these short term placements. So what's affordable housing delivery been like over the last few years? So this is a graph that goes back from 1920. And what you'll see, the top line, the light blue line, that's the total number of affordable housing completions, which also includes the number of properties that we've acquired as a council. Um, but fairly small numbers, um, but they're included in these totals. And what you'll see is delivery has increased significantly over the last few years. We had a particularly good year in 22-23, but still last year, still generally speaking, positive numbers. So that, that's been really good. And one of the key things that's helped improve this has been the Homes England strate Strategic Partnership Model. So this is where Homes England work more in partnership with, with the RPs of the housing associations over a longer period of time. 
Previously, every time an RP wanted to bid for funding, they have to bid on an individual site by basis that we would approve. It's very bureaucratic, but involved no long term certainty for the RPs over the funding. What's happened now is Homes England have said, we will give you a certain amount of funding if the RPs can deliver a certain amount of homes. So with that, certainty of a grant has increased the appetite for the RPs, particularly on land-led schemes. So what we've seen is schemes sort of ranging from sort of anywhere between 30 to 100 homes. The RPs are acquiring the whole site and delivering the whole site out as affordable housing. Range of tenures, so not just rented, a lot of shared ownership, but that's absolutely helped increase the number of new homes being built. Um, the two lines, lower lines, the top line is how many of those homes are rented and how many, the lower line, how many intermediate. So when we say intermediate, that means normally low cost home ownership models, normally shared ownership. And one particular challenge is just worth highlighting at this point is nutrient neutrality. So issues with neutrality causing a stop in planning permissions being approved that I suspect, although think that is getting resolved, I suspect will cause a drop off in figures, particularly for the next sort of year to 18 months. So just a bit more on, on last year's completions. So what you'll see is the dark blue line bar at the bottom of those charts. These three charts are split by our, our planning committee area. So that's how we hold this information at the moment. The dark blue chunks of this chart, they're affordable rented homes. So these are homes that are let at 80% of open market value, um, normally capped at local housing allowance levels. And this certainly in terms of rented housing is the main type of tenure being delivered. The light blue line at the top, that's intermediate. So then nearly all shed ownership. So that's a sort of part by part rent model that the government has begun to increase, which I think for us is Dorset Council has been particularly good at keeping younger working people in the area and giving people a chance to get out of rented accommodation into a home ownership model that over time they can acquire more of the percentage of the equity. And we'll also begin to see first homes coming through and these will be another intermediate form of housing. And these are ones where you would buy the property at 70% of the open market price with 30% discount, but you own the whole property subject to I think it's a cap of 250,000 so we're beginning to see those coming through what we want to be doing though is concentrating on sort of the light green line a dark green line in the middle which is the social rented housing delivery of social rented housing which is the most affordable type of affordable housing normally about 60 percent of open market values started to see some coming through we're hoping to increase the number um that get delivered over the next few years because that's there's a huge amount of demand for that type of accommodation. So I just want to talk about some of the challenges and sort of opportunities in affordable housing at the moment. So as you'd all be aware, we're in an uncertain housing market. Um, so what we've certainly seen is some open market sites slowing down a bit more nervousness from the developers, which say, can reduce delivery, but also might lead to opportunities when RPs might be able to acquire some extra units on Section 106 sites. So some opportunities, but we are seeing a slowness at some of the larger sites. Bill costs have also gone up hugely over re recent years, which is, of course, say, some uncertainty and some viability challenge. Not a huge amount of viability challenge, but we do see them. And... When I say viability challenges, that's developers saying we can't afford to provide the amount of affordable housing we would normally want on these sites. Can we reduce it? And um, we normally get that independently assessed. So we've seen some of those, but not huge numbers. We're also seeing some signs that building costs are beginning to stabilise. And hopefully that will give, be positive and allow for a little bit more confidence moving forward. One of the biggest challenges is sort of the next two points, really, which is Section 106 homes and demand on RP finances. So when we say Section 106 homes, these are homes that deliver through the planning process whereby a percentage of affordable housing on open market sites, normally around 35, 40% need to be affordable homes. We are finding that there are not many RPs that want to pick up these homes. The RPs want to concentrate on their land-led schemes. have also had to um, spend more money on improving their existing stock. You will have seen issues with damp and mould in the news, also cladding problems. So although their stock generally in this area is quite good, investment nationwide and a lot of these RPs cover many different areas um, 
has been more of a focus. They've got to spend more money on their existing properties, on a contract on landlords, which means less money for Section 106 homes, and also the uncertainty in the world of finance means they don't want to borrow more money uh, to purchase more homes at the moment. That, 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 that's a real challenge. There's certainly a few cases going back to planning committees where we've been looking at uh, changing tenures to ensure we still get some affordable, but also that these homes can carry on being built. So that's a particular challenge. Neutral neutrality, I've already mentioned there is progress being made on this, so hopefully we will be resolving this. And certainly a few planning missions have come through, but it has been a challenge and will remain a challenge. And we might also find that all affordable schemes now need to make some uh, pay some money for some offsite improvements. So there'll be increasing um, call on some of those finances. And finally, our local plan, a five year land supply, a Dorset Council. I know Purbeck have just had their local plan. Uh, confirmed, but the rest of Dorset or Dorset Council there will be working on their new local plan over the next few years. And certainly there have been areas with no five-year land supply, which does mean we struggle to control where new development comes as a council. But also from an opportunity point of view, we have seen schemes going through and being approved that have then converted to all affordable housing. So again, it has helped um, increase delivery, but the uncertainty isn't always terribly helpful. Now, I just wanted to concentrate a bit more on some of our rural schemes. Um, so these are schemes that just delivered purely in rural areas. And over the last three years, we've done a total of five rural exception sites, which has delivered 73 homes. And when we say exception sites, these are sites that go as exception to normal planning policy, um, but affordable housing in areas where there's identified housing need. So we've done five projects um, over last three years, which is okay, but we need to do more. Dorset, a predominantly rural area, that's something we're really looking to try and increase over the next the next few years, and we'll be working with our peers and communities to try and increase that de development. I mean, in addition to the exception sites, there have also been two developments that were de delivered all affordable housing, all in rural areas, but they weren't exception sites. They went through the open market housing as an RP land-led scheme then converted to all affordable. So the, the outcome was kind of the same, but they went through a very different route to get there. Again, it's possible we'll see more of that in the next few years. Key things to those is our exception site policy. So the issue we've got at the moment, I think we've got, I think, five local plans in Dorset Council at the moment, all with slightly different exception site policies, which at the very least from an officer point of view, is a pain. And I suspect it's a pain for, for, for people trying to bring these sites forward. Some are more restrictive than others. We've also got a varied approach to having open market housing on exception sites. I'll be honest, as an officer, I prefer affordable housing exception sites to be all affordable with no open market. I think it just adds a layer of complexity. It's never clear what's subsidising what. And also, I think it's easier to, when you're consulting with the community, if you know all the homes will be affordable, they'll all be for local people, you generally get better support and there's less suspicion of what the landowner's motives are in it. So well, there's other views, but that, that's been my view and my experience. We've got a draft uh, exception site policy in our local plan moving forward. It's a, yeah, it, it's quite straightforward, it's simple policy. Um, you know, next to a settlement, does meet, need to meet the identified need. So there's always quite a lot of work for us and the community making sure there is an identified need and we're meeting that need with these schemes appropriate to the location. But in the draft policy, again, it says all the homes should remain affordable in perpetuity. So it wouldn't allow open market. However, this is only a draft policy. We will we'll be consulting and I suspect several people on this call will be consulted about it and genuinely be interested to hear what, what your views are. Because what we all want is more affordable housing coming forward in rural areas. So regarding rural exception sites and rural housing, some of the, again, some of the challenges we're facing, clearly site availability in local areas, especially where there's really high land values, it can be difficult to find sites. Um, I think we particularly struggle because of this hope value we talk about. If we can get our five-year land supply sorted, I know there's a lot of work going on at the moment, and I think we're a bit more confident we will have a five-year land supply moving forward. I think it would be a good time, again, to engage with landowners what we are lucky with in Dorset is we've got loads of community groups and neighbourhood plan groups who are trying to work on these problems and are aware of the difficulties. 
Someone told me we've got no, more neighbour plans coming forward in Dorset than anywhere else. I don't know whether it's whether that's true or not, but it feels like it. There's lots of groups out there, and they're all aware of the problems with affordable housing, high house prices, people moving out of the village, can't be back into the village, lack of working people, no one to work in the, the pub and the shop or to send the kids to the local school, all of those sorts of issues. Um, and actually, I always remember going out to power stock early on the scheme that lord best mentioned early on they we did the consultation they said we're becoming a theme village it looks lovely it looks beautiful out here there's no life nothing's happening things are just slowly closing down and i think more villages sort of have that approach that they need something and people that have lived in the village certainly a long time aware that these villages need to grow and evolve so hopefully neighborhood plan groups and parish council are a really good way in for us we're worried we're going to start struggling to find our piece to build smaller sites. As we said before, I've talked about the some of the positives about the strategic partnership model. The problem is if you've got housing associations building several thousand homes a year, they're not going to be that attracted by 10 homes in a village in quite an awkward site. So again, in Dorset, we're lucky we've got people like Hasto, Magna and a few other housing associations who remain committed to exception sites. But it's just a bit of a worry. And when you speak to people in other areas, it's a concern they've got as well. Um, rural sites will always take a bit more grant. So Homes England are the main organisation that, that put the government funding in to affordable housing. There will nearly always be a higher grant ask in a rural area than in an urban area. The sites are smaller, you don't get the efficiency, the economies of scale with those efficiencies. And also they're in sites that, again, going back to power stock, a private developer probably wouldn't have chosen that site. It looks beautiful, but how it looked was really important to the community. And there was a long road and we had to put quite a lot of new sewer pipes in and stuff. So they become expensive. So the grant requirement does go up. Homes England know this and they're normally pretty supportive. Um, but it's just something to, to bear in mind. Homes England say they're still keen to deliver more affordable homes. No, there's not been as many done, but it's just, again, not as efficient for the housing association to build these homes. It can also be difficult to get planning um, approvals in Dorset. It's a beautiful area. I want to say AOMB area, but it's not called that. It's called something else, and I can't remember what we're meant to be calling National it now. Landscapes. Thank you. Thank you. National landscapes, um, Jurassic Coast, um, Heathlands. So it, it can be difficult. What we try and do is a, engage with the community first to make sure their expectations and aspirations are reasonable, but also engage early with our planning callers, get some pre-applications in, work, work early with people. And another one of our opportunities is a partnership we're doing with um, ACRE. So there's been some funding recently from DEFRA to ACRE to improve the amount of housing enabling offices working in rural communities. So we've done some work with Dorset Community Action, and it's been really good working with them. We've gotten really well with them. We've come up with a good project that will make sure it adds to what the council does already because you've obviously got some enabling staff here. We don't want to duplicate work. We don't want to tread on each other's toes. So they've appointed us a member of staff only for one year period, whether this becomes a longer term project, who knows? We don't know at the moment. Hopefully it will. But as an independent advisor that can work with communities to help bring these projects forward. So ACA have appointed their member staff as a lady called Jackie Cuff. I've seen her on the question and, uh, question and answer stuff here. So I know she's on this meeting somewhere. We think she's going to do really well. But anyone on this, this group who's looking at affordable housing scheme, works for Parish Council, Neighbour Plan, get in touch with her. She's a, she's a, re a free resource. We need to be used, needs to make the most of it. So the idea is she'll work with Neighbour Plan groups, do some housing needs surveys, begin the process of unlocking some of these sites. She'll be, doing well to do that do it in a year but at least to start the conversations going um, in parish and rural councils i just want to do a few examples of some of the exception sites that we, that we have delivered or say we that the rps have delivered in the last few years so this is a scheme uh house stock finished last year um, six social rented homes, so Magna always like doing social rented, so we really like working with them. They also want to do modular factory built homes, so all of these homes are built in a factory in Dorset and, and put up on site, which hopefully will, what it would mean for the local people is the development process was a lot quicker, there was less disruption, so everything happened a lot quicker. They got solar panels, I know CPRE likes a solar panel, so they've all got solar panels. Um, but again, and hopefully then Obviously, you can't see the rest of the development there, but they have fitted in quite nicely despite being factory built homes. 
This is a scheme at Hazelby Bryant, which is one of the ones I was talking about earlier that was delivered through the Homes and Strategic Partnership model by a, a developer called AJC in partnership with an RP called Abbey. So went through planning as a traditional open market scheme, but they were always very clear that they were going to deliver it as all affordable housing. But it can there can be some tensions going through planning committee because we haven't got it controlled by a section 106. So you're trusting the RP, and the RP is not going to want to walk out on its commitments, but yeah, you're trusting the RP and the developer to deliver what they said they're going to, which sometimes in planning and sometimes not all developers do always deliver what they said is done can be an interesting one. But we have had a good number of schemes develop using this approach. And so far, they've all delivered what they said they're going to. And I suspect we'll see more of these sites in the future. Um, this, is, right, this is a site in, in Drimpton. Again, this is a community-led scheme. Um, so again, owned and built by Albie, but with a community land trust who led the whole process. So we, we support them. Alison and her colleagues support them as well to bring the schemes forward, to choose the right site that they think is deliverable in the right location for the village. They wanted rented homes because that's what the need was for. And again, community has it's a really good way of getting homes built in sites where it would have been really difficult to do so otherwise. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about community housing because otherwise Alison will get cross if I talk about all of the stuff she's going to mention. But just for Dorset, we're quite proud of it. So we do talk about it. So we've had 11 com completed community led projects so far. And uh, there's 133 community owned homes in Dorset. So it's not meeting the housing crisis, solving it, by itself, but it is beginning to make an impact. And particularly in rural areas, it, it is beginning to help. And part of the new um, DCA enabling officer will be, again, to spread the message about community-led housing as one of the options. And I'll, I'll just finish off with an example of a recent given, again, we just quite like, so we keep talking about it. It's Bridport co-housing. So again, if people know Bridport, it's behind the hospital. I think it's the largest co-housing scheme in the country, certainly the largest affordable one. It took a long time to come forward. As I say, I think I had my first meeting about it in 2012 and it got finished last year. So the perseverance from the co-housing group was, was amazing, but they've ended up with a really nice development. Again, lots of solar panels. You can see the building work here is the common room that's been finished where they can be able to help host group activities, have meals together. Um, but just a project of, there have been loads of problems, but an example of if everyone's got the right attitude, you can solve these. So Homes England were great. BCHA took the, um, the affordable, were great. The co-housing group. Our allocations team, because all of this stuff is slightly different, have all been really great. And if you go into with a positive attitude, you can get some really nice results, just not terribly quickly in this case. But say 53, all affordable homes, you know, all the, the rental ones, they're on doors at home choice, they're coming, the people are coming off our housing register. And again, hoping that we'll use it as an example for more and more community led housing. And that's everything from me. So I shall stop sharing. Paul, great stuff. Many thanks. And you've, you've led us straight into Alison's uh, presentation that, that follows now. So uh, let, let's take that and then we'll have questions for both of you and, and, and wider discussion.